we speak your name We lift our eyes Tune our hearts into your beat Where we walk, there you be With fire in our eyes and our lives alight Your love untamed is blazing out The streets will glow forever bright Your glory is breaking through the night You will never Good morning, Discovery Kids. I hope y'all have had a great week. We are still in the book of Acts, and we are jumping ahead a little bit um, to chapter 12. And as we're jumping, we're going to um, talk about Peter's escape from prison. We are now in Acts chapter 12, if you would like to join me and read along. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and guards stood at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. 
Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were, hope were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhonda came to, the, came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said. And then he left for another place. So the next morning, Herod goes to find Peter and Peter's nowhere to be found. And Herod's basically sitting there scratching his head like, where is Peter? What has happened? And he got really angry at the guards who were supposed to be guarding Peter. So Peter is in prison and he's stuck there. And Peter was probably feeling more than just physically stuck. His heart probably felt stuck too. Like he didn't really have anywhere else to go and there was no way out. And what was he gonna do next? Peter had had visions before this moment. So he wasn't super surprised when a light was shown in a cell. And the whole time Peter's being told to put on his clothes and sandals and to do different things, he thinks this is a vision he's having. He thinks it isn't real. Peter goes from being stuck in prison to being led by something he thinks isn't real, this is just all in his head, to knowing that God had rescued him from Herod and the plans Herod had made for him that next day. Peter was treated differently because of his faith. Mean and bad things were done to him and others who believed the same way that Peter did. But through that, God showed up. His presence was with Peter and he was rescued. We can be like Peter. We can be treated differently because of our faith and the ways that God speaks to us and works through us. Sometimes the way we live because we believe in Jesus makes people angry. They can't understand us and they don't like that they can't understand us. What's something that you really want right now? A game, a toy, a Lego set. Um, what's something you'd love to be able to buy if you had the money to do so? Do you have that thing in mind? Okay, keep it there. Okay, so you're going to start saving money to buy whatever this thing is you're thinking of. But how are you going to do that? You start saving your allowance, doing extra chores to earn a little extra money, and you even ask your neighbors if they have anything for you to do for them. You do this for a few weeks and you finally earn and save enough money to buy this thing you're thinking of, the thing you really want. And your mom agrees to take you to get this new toy, this new game, the Lego set, whatever it is you're thinking of. But on your way, you see a homeless family and something inside of you tells you to share and to give all that you have. Are you going to do it? But what will the people who don't understand why you live and give the way that you do? What will they say? Would this thought stop you from helping others? From helping this family who is in need when you have the means to help? God's grace helps to guide us in moments like this. God's grace is big and he can do really big things. So big that he can even whisper to us through the Holy Spirit. Remember from the past few weeks that we've been talking about the Holy Spirit who was this, who is this promised friend um, that we were given from God. We don't have an angel like in the story of Peter that we just heard, but we do have the Holy Spirit, that friend that we've been talking about. All the good things you could and can do 
Is there a point when you don't do them because of what might happen to you? Peter knows he has made the Jews really angry. He knows he has made Herod really mad too. So does he stop doing the things that he is called to do because he is a follower of Jesus? It probably would have been really, really easy for him to just stop and turn back to the ways that others were trying to convince him to do, or that others wanted him to do, rather. So should we stop doing the things that we are called to do because other people don't like it or they don't get it? God has sent the Holy Spirit to help guide us and to remind us that God is with us. He is our comforter through the hard things, the scary things, and the uncertain things. Even during the things we don't know if we should do or not because of what others will think, what they will do, or what they will say. Let God guide you and let his whispers into your heart to help you. Would you all please join me in prayer? Dear Jesus, we love you and we thank you for this day you have given us and for another opportunity to worship you together. Lord, I pray for my friends. I pray that you would continue to keep them safe and healthy and that you would also continue to comfort them during our days of being at home. We pray that you would use us however you see fit and that we would continue to be able to do hard things even when we are worried about what that looks like. Help us to continue being your followers even when people don't understand and we are looked at differently because we believe in and choose you. Lord, I pray for a great week and for others to see you in all that we do. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. I hope you all have another great week and I can't wait to see you whenever that is. Bye.